Hi everyone, welcome to Bay Sunday. I'm your host, Frank Malico. Good to have you with us. Another great show for you this morning, but first a couple of reminders for you out there. We invite you to follow us on our social media. We've got some extras there, behind the scenes information, some gadget reviews, like our Facebook page. We'd appreciate that. Subscribe onto YouTube, follow us on Twitter. I think you know the drill, and if you've got a good idea out there, I'd love to hear from you on our social network sites. And you can always go to cbssf.com and chime in as well. Okay, let's kick it off. A very familiar face and voice here in the Bay Area, a nationwide news and business anchor, reporter, and a money guru, the author of It's Your Money, So Take It Personally, a must-have guide on sustaining your bank account. She has advised personal money management to more than 290 million households and businesses and she just got back to the Bay Area about a year and a half ago she's been working on her book took the time out to tell you how to take the fear out of dealing with your money please welcome Valerie Coleman Morris how are you I am very good how are you good to have you here thank you it's good to be home okay why did you write a book Had where to. did this all come from? every time I gave a speech anytime I gave a workshop people would say okay fine and so the name of your book is they presumed I had a book and they told me you have to write a book because even though they're taking notes during my seminars or keynotes they said they wanted to have a repository of the suggestions I was making and the main reason was because I said I do incremental doable specific suggestions on how to reinvent your relationship with your money because we don't want people to say I can hardly wait to get back to normal because back to normal money habits is what got us into the recession. Exactly. It's like, did you learn a little sum about yourself writing the book? Oh, I did, absolutely. I understand now that I am a really resilient person because writing this book, writing the book wasn't the hard part. I could only imagine. You know, trying to get it published in an era where a lot of brick and mortar bookstores are going away, the publishing industry is changing. So I had to stay really focused on making sure that this book would see the light of day, yeah. and it did. Relationships and money. Yes. Marriage and money. When you pool your finances, it just changes everything. Why is that so? It's fire and ice sometimes. It is because money is a very emotional issue. Money has no conscience. Money depends on yours. So if you're getting married, if you have a relationship with someone where the two of you are combining your lifestyle and you don't know your risk assessment, you don't know the other person's habits, their money rules, or lack thereof, mm -hmm. It's going to cause an argument. I always say to people who are getting married, I said, have you given the most important gift you can give your intended? And they go, what's that? And I say, a copy of your credit report. Right. And they look at me like I'm crazy and they go, oh, I'm not going there. And my point is, you can talk about it now or you can fight about it later. Well, you mentioned in the book, I think, where uh, um, a woman and a man were going to get married and his gift to her was, I'll be debt free. You gotta get rid of all, she ah, demanded, yes. said, you gotta get rid of all your debt, exactly. otherwise you're not showing your commitment And he tonight. did it. This was one of my CNN producers, yeah. and that's what she said to her husband. Her idea was, we need to be able to handle our debt going forward from the marriage so that we can employ the disciplines that work for both of us. So she was not willing to take into the marriage the debt that he had incurred not everybody would do that or could do that, but he did. And I yeah. think it's a very good money lesson. You have say. to let the person know what you expect, how you're going to deal with your money. Just because you choose to cohabitate, it doesn't mean your money has to. What advice would you give people that are about to go into a marriage? Besides I, bring down the debt, say you're oh, debt yeah. free, but you know, some people are misers, some people are spenders. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of find that, uh, that equilibrium? I think that you talk about it, number one. Mm -hmm. Another gift that you can give each other, as people are arranging for their wedding, they talk about the dress what everybody is going to wear, where people are seated, the color of the flowers, all of that. We've been there. <laughs> and I say, did you make an appointment with a financial advisor oh, so the two of you can sit down and figure out what's your risk tolerance, what's mine, what is the debt load, how are we going to plan going forward? I always say to people, panic is not a plan. So make a plan before panic sets in. Sure. And for many, many couples, what I suggest is a three-pot system, your money, his or her money and our money because everybody deserves to have money of their own that they don't account sure. to for anybody else yeah, but the live. family money can be a collective pot into which each of you contribute and then take care of life. Can you change behavior? I mean if someone is just uh, shopping all the time and spending more than they can how does one become a saver then I guess and how do you change behavior? Well. I like to say that I don't necessarily change behavior, but I certainly want to influence it. Okay. To be an influencer, I think, is a far more likely thing to achieve than to changing somebody. Right. So if I can influence someone to say, you know what, every single time I get ready to buy something, a little voice is going to say, is this a want or is this a need? 
I have influenced the way that they spend money because there's a difference. I teach from the age of three. I was just going to ask you about your grand grandkids. About money. And it's like, is this a need or a want? And there are lots of adults who never, ever understand the difference. Thus, they are in the situation that you were describing. Last question. Generation growing up now with all the media influence and all the computers and such, are they in for a big wake-up call? I think that they are already awake. Okay. I think that they are saving more and sooner than most of us. I have a lot of 20-somethings who say to me, is it really true that saving for my retirement is the single best investment I can make for myself right now in my 20s? And I say yes. And the last thing that I say to them is understand the magic of compounding. If you get into the habit of always paying yourself first, meaning always putting something aside for your emergency fund, mm -hmm. always putting something aside for retirement, as you make more money, you just drop more into each of those pots. Makes you feel good, too. Well, I thank you, and I hope that people, I heard you talking about social media. Yes. Follow me on Twitter, Her Money Talks, okay. and on Facebook. Valerie Very good. Coleman well, Valerie, so nice to meet you and uh, have you, you on the program, and good luck with the book. I appreciate well, it. It just came out about a, about a month and a half ago. If you'd like more information on money management, please visit ValerieColemanMorris.com. All one word. And what was that uh, Twitter address again? Her Money Talks. Her Money Talks. There you go, at Twitter. And you can stay with us because we got much more of Bay Sunday coming up right after the break. Stay right there.